In World War II, by the time the year 1943 rolled around, everybody knew that the Nazis were losing on all fronts, including the propaganda war. So much for the brilliance of little Joseph Goebbels. Like most toadies, he aimed his messages at his boss, Adolf Hitler. As a result, Nazi propaganda films were based around groups, around crowds and military might. Meanwhile, British propaganda films, mainly documentaries, were much more effective. The films were lyrical and human and compassionate and believable. Hollywood used satire. They made fun of Hitler in films like The Great Dictator. And they brilliantly mixed entertainment with anti-Nazi sentiment. Like Casablanca, which was Adolf Hitler's least favorite film in the whole wide world. And you can see why. and Goebbels were both film fans. They'd sit in the basement and binge watch Hollywood movies, analyzing them, trying to see how what made them tick. They even fashioned a, a Nazi film industry, producing lavish movies of their own. So in 1942, in order to stem the rot, they decided to produce their own major dramatic feature film. It was going to be imbued with national socialist messages and anti-Semitic messages. And the story they chose to retell in their own way was the sinking of the Titanic. Now, by 1943, which is just, just over 30 years after the Titanic actually sank, there had been a number of Titanic movies. Newsreels of the actual ship was stitched together into the misleadingly titled Survivors of the Titanic. Two silent fictionalized versions were released, both rather insensitively, only months after the liner sank. One was made by Germany and the other by France. Now, there's a rather sick film industry joke, which says don't make a film about the Titanic because the plot's very simple and we all know it. Ship sails, ship hits iceberg, ship sinks. So the movie you make rises or falls on the characters, the doomed characters you choose to portray in the film. I don't know whether you've noticed it, but the engines have stopped. Huh? The engines have stopped? Yes. In 1929, the first sound version of the Titanic tragedy was made in Britain. You know the situation. All hands on deck. And in 1933, there was a rather glossy American film based on the Noel Coward play, Cavalcade. Too big, the Atlantic, isn't it? Mm, far too big. Ooh, and too deep. Oh, much, much too deep. Wouldn't it be awful if the magician came to us and said, unless you count accurately, every single fish in the Atlantic who die tonight. We should die tonight. So what was going to be different about this Nazi Titanic film? Well, it seems they wanted to portray the sinking of the Titanic as a British national disaster. The plot implied that the British capitalists, corrupt, greedy, motivated by money, had forced the captain to take risks in order to get to New York in record-breaking time to preserve their investment. But Hitler and Goebbels also wanted this propaganda film to look like an adventure romance, a bit like Casablanca. But where do you get a director from? Because most of the German directors had either fled to America or were in concentration camps. And the answer was a fellow called Herbert Selpin. He was ambitious and opportunistic, so this was his chance. Well, from the start, things started to go wrong. It was a very demanding shoot. 
the lead actor got the lead actress pregnant, uh, progress was painfully slow. Then came the big decision. The decision was made that because the Titanic sank at night, they were going to shoot the sinking of the Titanic scenes at night in a very large tank, but they needed lights. And Berlin was under a blackout because they feared Allied bombing. But Hitler was so committed to this movie that he decided to lay aside that law. He allowed them to film at night with lights. And guess what? <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but the Allies bombed the set. The director Selpin liked a little liquid refreshment from time to time. And that night he got drunk as a skunk and on the set went into a tirade about how stupid the Nazi party was and how Hitler himself was a moron. And of course the crew was riddled with secret police. So they arrested him, took him to Berlin, interrogated him, put him in prison. And a little later, he was found hanged in his cell. Sound familiar? And everyone's getting a little nervous by this time because they realize that the Gestapo are the real producers of the film. One of the actors who kept blowing his lines was taken out to the back of the set and shot, and he was replaced with his understudy. Under a nervous new director, the film was completed. But when Goebbels saw it, he was horrified. You see, the director, Selping, had sabotaged the film from the start, and the subtext of the movie wasn't about evil financiers making the captain go and crash the ship. It was more about the captain not listening to any advice, being single-minded, bloody-minded, and taking the boat and smashing it into an iceberg because he wouldn't listen. And it was pretty obvious that the captain was Hitler and the ship was Germany. The film was shown once in Paris and once in Prague before it was pulled and all the prints were ordered to be destroyed. At least that's what Goebbels thought because two of them were smuggled out and they reappeared six years later after the war was over. Titanic, eine der wirklich grandiosen Schöpfungen des deutschen Filmes. Die frevelhafte Jagd nach einem Rekord, getrieben von Leidenschaft und Liebe, fand mit dem Untergang der Titanic ihr tragisches Ende in den eisigen Fluten des Ozeans. Yes, yes. Here's one of the ironies of life. Nazi Germany was destroyed. It was no more, their legal system had disappeared and with it all copyright. So when the Reich organization decided to make the best film about the Titanic based on Walter Lord's book, A Night to Remember, they used some of the spectacular disaster shots from the German Nazi film. Kenneth Moore, whose warm, compelling sincerity holds him high in the hearts of cinema goers all over the world as Lightoller the second officer on a ship whose destruction shook the very foundation of man's progress and marked the end of an era. Okay, so in this little video, I've included 11 movies and some are great examples of propaganda. But which do you think is the most effective persuasive filmmaking? Is it The Triumph of the Will, The Great Dictator, Casablanca, or even the Nazi Titanic? Now Goebbels himself said that once you know you're watching propaganda, it doesn't work. So I give this one the award. In Humphrey Jennings' film, the message of hearth and home and staying the course is brilliantly and secretly delivered.